Hello everyone, we'll start with the first chapter of physics in class 10th that is electricity. So what is electricity? Electricity is a study about charges or you can say electric charges and it is an important source of energy. We can see its usage in our home to industries as well as in transportations. Also the automobile companies nowadays are developing electric engine and the leading company is Tesla and for our day. Electricity can be classified as static electricity or you can say electrostatics and current electricity. So static means rest. So electric static electricity is charges or you can say study of charges at rest and in current electricity we study charges in motion. What is charge? Charge is a physical property of matter that causes it to experience a force when placed in an electromagnetic field and it is represented by capital Q. We have studied about positive charges, negative charges in class 8. You can say protons, positive charge and electrons, negative charge. And the SI unit of charge is Coulomb. The two very important property of charges that same charges repel each other and opposite charges attract each other. If we talk about electron, then one electron is estimated to be 1.6 into 10 to the power 19 coulomb. Or if we want to know in one coulomb how many electrons are there, so it comes to be 6.24 into 10 to the power 18 electron. Also, one proton charges 1.6 into 10 to the power 19. The only difference is that in proton it is positive and in electron it is negative if we talk about a normal circuit or let us assume that you have a conductor metal and you have connected that metal with a battery or cell or in place of metal just take a bulb what will happen from the battery the current will start flowing through the bulb and the bulb will glow or you can say that the current is flowing through the metal conductor as well now now how it happens we should know that current travel from positive terminal to negative terminal and in the same process the electron flows opposite to the direction of current suppose there is a metal now in metals there are random free electrons they are not oriented in a particular direction but as soon a cell is connected or a battery is connected now the positive terminal of battery will attract all the electron towards itself and you can see that the negative ter terminal will repel all the electron away from itself now the attraction toward positive will make the electron go towards the positive and the current will flow opposite to that so you can see here the current is moving from positive to negative whereas the electron is moving from negative to positive. So there are different materials through which the, condu the conduction is possible or it is not possible. So we can say there are two types of material one is conductor and the other is insulator. The conductors are the materials that allow the electricity to pass through it and the most common example is metal whereas in insulator are those materials that does not allow the electricity to pass through it for example rubber plastic etc now the most important thing that is responsible for conduction is free electrons we have studied in chemistry class 9 that there is valential electrons and in case of metals there are 1 2 and 3 electron which is easy for the metals to lose and that makes the conduction possible in case of metals also there are different theories that you will study later in classes and the and this theory by figure I am representing here that is valence band and conduction band theory for conduction in metals, semiconductors and insulators. In conductors the valence band and conduction band overlaps and thus it is very easy for the electron to move from valence to conduction band and thus conduction is possible whereas in case of insulators there is a very large gap between valence band and conduction band and thus the electron cannot move 
from valence to conduction band and there is no conduction of electricity in the case of insulators. So you saw that the cell is responsible for conduction or you can say the electrons were moving under the influence of cell and thus the current was moving. Now how actually it is happening? Let us take an example of these two tanks tank A and tank B. You can see that water in tank A is at a higher level and, and tank B is at a lower level. If we open the check wall what will happen? The water will flow from tank A to tank B. Why? Because we know that the potential energy in, of water in tank A is higher as compared to that of tank B. Similarly to move a charge or you can say for the current to flow the potential difference is to be maintained and this potential difference is maintained using a cell or a battery. So what is electric potential in case of electricity? It is the work done in carrying a unit positive charge from infinity to a point inside a electric field and it is denoted by V and the SI unit is volt. So as it is said work done. Now try to understand that the charges either repel or attract each other so if we take two positive charge and we have to move one positive to charge towards the other we have to put some work why because these both charges are repelling each other and every charge has a electric field around it you will study these things later so two same charges are repelling but you want to move the charge towards each other so you have to work on the charges and this charge is stored in case of potential energy the next topic is potential difference or voltage the potential difference between two points is the work done moving a unit charge from one point to another suppose there are two point point a and point b and you connect these two point using some kind of material or you can say a wire or you can say a metal what will happen because there is a potential difference so the charge in that particular wire or metal will move from higher potential to lower potential so the work is done on moving the charge so the simple formula comes is that potential difference is equal to work done upon quantity of charge moved so you can present potential difference by V work done by W and quantity of charge by Q. So formula comes V is equal to W upon Q. Now if someone asks how you can define 1 volt, we know that volt is the unit of potential difference. So it is very easy. If you say that 1 joule of work is done in moving a charge of 1 coulomb, it is 1 volt. So what is 1 volt? The potential difference between two points is said to be 1 volt if one joule work is done in moving one coulomb of electric charge from one point to another. So one volt is equal to one joule upon volt coulomb or one volt is one joule per coulomb. The instrument that we use to measure voltage is volt meter and there are some property of volt meter that is it has very high resistance and is connected in parallel. Now resistance, resistance means to resist means some kind of hindrance. So when charge move or you can say electric current pass, there is some hindrance offered in the path. That hindrance is called as resistance and we will study about resistance in details once we study Ohm's law. So as we studied that if there is a potential difference and we connect those two points with some wire now what happens the charges flow now this charge flow is called as current and we want to define it in simple terms we can say that current is rate of flow of charge current is denoted by i and i is nothing but rate of flow so rate means by time divided by time as you studied in class 9 in case of acceleration and velocity rate of change of displacement is what velocity and rate of change of velocity is what acceleration similarly rate of flow of charge is current so what we will do is i is equal to q upon t where q is charge and t is time and time in the standard is always taken in seconds so si unit of current is ampere that is denoted by capital a now you can say that one one coulomb 
of charge flows in any conductor in one second the current is said to be one ampere or you can say one 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 ampere is equal to one coulomb per second since we know that current is a physical quantity so what kind of physical quantity it is it is a scalar quantity one can say that current is having direction because it is flowing from one point to another but always remember the direction is not fixed because you can twist the wire so when we talk about vector the position is fixed with the some coordinate or you can say it has a fixed coordinate from origin or you can say from some axis but here you can change by applying physical force although the current flowing will have same magnitude but the direction can change thus it is a scalar quantity the instrument with which we measure the current is called as a meter the property of a meter is that it has very low resistance and it is connected in series so here you see series connection and there earlier you saw parallel connection there are two types of connection one is series parallel and it is same as like in mathematics you see parallel lines and you can see in series and we'll see such circuits when we we'll study about circuits one more instrument is there with which we measure current or we can detect current is galvanometer the the difference between galvanometer and ammeter is that with ammeter you could just have a value of current but with galvanometer you can get both direction and the magnitude of current after this let us see some symbols that we'll use in circuits so once we start studying circuits so the first very important symbol is cell you can see one positive and one negative the positive is longer than the negative this is the symbol for cell any standard cell is to be drawn like this no need to draw plus and minus it is just for your denotation the cathode and anode if we connect two and more cells it becomes a battery and it is a series connection so this you can here you can see that it is battery of two cells if you individually see it is two cells and it is connected together so it becomes a battery it can be battery of three cells as well you can see connecting wire wire join means two wires are going through a junction and even the wire may overlap thus it is wire crossing without contact and here is the symbol for resistance resistance that is the hindrance of path so whenever we will draw resistance it will be like this and this resistance may be fixed or may be variable if it is variable we will draw like this with a arrow this arrow means you can change the resistance as per your requirement this is simple representation for ammeter voltmeter and galvanometer a for ammeter v for voltmeter and g for galvanometer positive will connect to positive end and negative will connect to negative end now if we talk about switch so here you can see the two wires are not linked together or they are not joined together there is some gap and this uh, thus it is called as open switch now if we close you can see that the wires are now in contact and the path is closed so it is called as closed switch for now try to re recollect all these symbols and the definitions that we covered today after this we'll study the first law that is ohm's law and we'll proceed with the other topics like resistance its combination series parallel and heating effect of electric current along with power till till then have a good day thank you